Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're diving into a topic that often comes up when we talk about hormones, but maybe not always in the context of women's health. Testosterone. Yes, women produce testosterone too, and it plays some really important roles in our bodies. But when it comes to testosterone therapy for women, there's a lot of discussion and frankly, a lot of uncertainty. So based on some recent research and guidelines, let's break down what we know, what we don't know, and what the current recommendations are for using testosterone therapy in women. We'll look at women from their reproductive years through menopause and beyond. First off, is testosterone actually a female hormone? Yes, absolutely. Premenopausal women naturally produce both testosterone and estrogen. Androgens, including testosterone, are essential for the development and maintenance of female sexual anatomy and physiology. They also modulate sexual behavior. Now, just like other hormones, testosterone levels change over our lifespan. They tend to peak in a woman's 20s and then gradually decline with age. By the time a woman reaches menopause, blood testosterone levels are about one quarter to half of what they were at their peak. However, interestingly, some studies suggest that testosterone levels appear to be maintained or even increased slightly in a woman after the age of 65 or 70. The significance of this later life increase is yet to be fully understood. Surgical menopause or removal of ovaries can cause more profound decline in testosterone. So why would a woman consider testosterone therapy? Some symptoms that have been potentially linked to low testosterone levels in women include low sexual desire, unexplained fatigue, changes in mood or cognition, bone loss, and decreased muscle strength. However, it's not entirely clear what the physiological role of testosterone is during menopause, especially compared to the well-understood effects of estrogen deficiency. There's no substantial data to support the hypothesis that insufficient testosterone production in women definitely results in lowered sexual desire or diminished well-being. In fact, there's no defined cutoff blood level that can be used to diagnose female androgen insufficiency or to differentiate women with and without sexual dysfunction. So what's the evidence for testosterone therapy for sexual function? Despite the lack of clear diagnostic level, a lot of research on testosterone therapy has focused on sexual function, specifically hypoactive sexual desire disorder or HSDD. Several randomized placebo-controlled clinical trials and meta-analysis suggest that testosterone therapy can significantly improve sexual function in postmenopausal women. This includes improvements in areas like sexual desire, arousal, orgasmic function, pleasure, sexual responsiveness, and a reduction in sexual concerns and distress. The effect size is often described as modest, averaging around one additional satisfying sexual event per month compared to placebo. It's important to note that the majority of studies showing this benefit recruited women diagnosed with HSDD or generalized female sexual dysfunction. So these findings cannot be generalized to women without sexual dysfunction. So what about other symptoms? This is where the evidence becomes less clear. For mood and well-being, some pilot studies and anecdotal evidence suggest testosterone might improve mood, well-being and energy levels. One recent real-world study found improvements in mood and cognitive symptoms in women on HRT who added testosterone. However, systematic reviews and larger trial data often conclude there's insufficient evidence to support the use of testosterone for general well-being or depressed mood. It might improve well-being in premenopausal women, but data is inconclusive. For cognition, similar to mood, some studies have shown beneficial effects on verbal learning and memory. However, other studies found no effect on different aspects of cognitive function. Overall, the data from available studies is inconsistent, and there is insufficient evidence to support the use of testosterone to enhance cognitive performance or delay cognitive decline. In terms of muscle and bone, 
Few studies have evaluated the musculoskeletal effects of testosterone in women, and those that exist often have small participant numbers. Most participants in these studies are also taking concurrent estrogen therapy. The available data do not consistently support an effective testosterone treatment on bone density, lean body mass, total body fat, or muscle strength when used in physiological doses. However, one study did find that bioavailable testosterone, the portion available to tissues, and the androgen receptor in muscle were positively associated with muscle mass and strength in premenopausal women, but total testosterone was not associated with these outcomes. More research is needed to determine the impact of testosterone on musculoskeletal health, especially in women with low bone mass or osteoporosis. For other physical symptoms, most studies suggest testosterone has no significant beneficial effect on hot flashes. Some studies showed improvement in somatic symptoms or vaginal dryness with combined estrogen testosterone, while others found no difference. Now let's talk about safety and side effects. Safety is a major consideration, especially since testosterone therapy is often prescribed off-label for women. When used at doses that approximate physiological levels seen in younger women, testosterone therapy is generally well tolerated in the short term. The most common side effects reported in studies were mild increases in acne and body or facial hair. These are generally mild and reversible with dose reduction or discontinuation. Side effects like alopecia, deepening of voice, and clitoral enlargement are rare with physiological replacement. And what about cardiovascular health? This is a complex area with limited long-term data. Oral testosterone therapy is associated with adverse lipid profiles, such as decreasing HDL and increasing LDL, and is not recommended. Studies of non-oral forms like gels, creams, patches, implants in physiological doses have shown no significant adverse effects on lipid profiles over the short term. Testosterone therapy has not been associated with increases in blood pressure, blood glucose, or HbA1c levels. There's a non-significant trend for increased risk of deep vein thrombosis or blood clots with therapy, but the role of concurrent estrogen is unclear. Limited data prevent assessment of effects on heart attack or death. Crucially, RCTs often exclude women at high cardiovascular risk, so the findings may not apply to these individuals. In terms of breast health, available data suggests that testosterone therapy does not increase mammographic breast density. Short-term studies don't indicate an increased risk of breast cancer. However, data are insufficient to assess long-term breast cancer risk. There's no evidence it can prevent breast cancer, and women with a history of hormone-sensitive breast cancer are generally excluded from trials, so caution is recommended in this group. Overall, testosterone therapy in doses approximating physiological levels are not associated with serious adverse effects in the short-term studies, but these studies did exclude women at high risk. Safety data for physiological doses are not available beyond 24 months. So, should we be monitoring testosterone levels? Measuring testosterone levels in women is tricky. Women have much lower circulating concentrations than men, and the common immunoassays used are often limited in accuracy and sensitivity for the female range. Direct assays are considered highly unreliable. Liquid chromatography tandem mass spectrometry, or LCMS, is considered more accurate. Because of these measurement challenges and a lack of clear deficiency level, monitoring focuses on ensuring levels don't go too high. Current guidance suggests measuring a baseline total testosterone level by using an accurate assay before starting therapy. A repeat level should be checked three to six weeks after starting treatment to assess absorption. After that, monitoring involves assessing the clinical response and checking a total testosterone level every six months to screen for overuse. Clinical improvement in symptoms is considered more important than hitting a specific number within the normal range. So what testosterone treatment options are available? A significant issue is the lack of testosterone treatments specifically licensed for women in many countries. This means that when prescribed, it's often done off-label 
usually by modifying the dose of a product approved for men. Current recommendations state there is an unmet need for the provision and approval of female-specific formulations designed to achieve physiological concentrations. If an appropriate licensed female product isn't available, using a small amount of a male formulation off-label is considered reasonable, provided blood levels are kept within the female physiological range. However, compounded bioidentical testosterone therapy is generally not recommended due to the lack of evidence for efficacy and safety. If it must be used due to lack of authorized alternatives, the compounding pharmacy should meet industry standards for quality and safety. Using any preparation that results in supra-physiological concentrations, including high-dose pellets or injections, is not recommended. As mentioned, oral formulations are also not recommended due to adverse effects on lipids. So who might benefit from testosterone therapy? Based on the current evidence, the only indication for which there is sufficient evidence is for postmenopausal women diagnosed with HSDD after a formal biopsychosocial assessment and only if conventional HRT also hasn't been effective. Hormone replacement therapy or HRT with estrogen should typically be tried first. It's also important that genitourinary symptoms, or GSM, are treated, as this can also affect sexual function. For more information about GSM, watch this video. There is insufficient data to make general recommendations regarding the use of testosterone in premenopausal women for sexual function or any other outcome. More data is required in premenopausal women, including those with conditions like premature ovarian insufficiency, hypothalamic amenorrhea, or those on SSRIs or combined hormonal contraception. This brings us back to gaps and limitations in the current knowledge. Several key issues are worth highlighting. A lack of long-term prospective randomized controlled trials is a major limitation. More adequately powered double-blind RCTs are needed. There are concerns about industry funding in many trials, potentially skewing published results. Academic sponsored studies are needed. We need to better understand the role of endogenous testosterone as there's no clear link between low levels and symptoms like sexual dysfunction. The long-term safety data, especially regarding cardiovascular and breast outcomes, is still needed. We need more data on the effects of testosterone in various populations, including premenopausal women, women with specific medical conditions or on medications, and those with comorbidities who are excluded from previous trials. Better tools for assessing female sexual function are needed, as current measures rely heavily on subjective reporting and can be affected by a strong placebo effect. The ideal duration of testosterone treatment is still unclear. The majority of studies are conducted in the UK, US and Australia with a predominant representation of Caucasian participants comprising less than 1% from other ethnic backgrounds. Future research should prioritize more diverse ethnic representation. So what are the key takeaways? Testosterone is an essential hormone for women, playing roles beyond just sexual function. There is evidence that testosterone therapy can improve sexual function or HSDD in postmenopausal women when used at physiological doses. Evidence for benefits on other symptoms like mood, cognition, muscle mass and bone density is currently inconclusive or insufficient. Long-term safety data beyond two years is limited, particularly concerning cardiovascular and breast health, although short-term data of physiological doses are generally reassuring in study populations. Accurate measurement of female testosterone levels is challenging. Monitoring focuses on ensuring levels stay within the physiological range, and clinical response is key. There's an unmet need for licensed female-specific testosterone products. Compounded and high-dose formulations are generally discouraged. Testosterone therapy should only be considered for postmenopausal women with diagnosed HSDD after exploring other causes and trying HRT first. More research is urgently needed across all aspects of testosterone's role in therapy in women across the lifespan. 
Given the complexities and the current gaps in research, testosterone therapy for women is not a one-size-fits-all solution. It's crucial to have a thorough discussion with a healthcare professional who can assess your individual symptoms, medical history, and the potential risks and benefits based on the currently available evidence. What are your thoughts or experiences on this topic? Let me know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more evidence-based health information. Thanks for watching and see you next time.